English is a West Germanic language that originated from Anglo-Frisian dialects brought to Britain in the mid-5th to 7th centuries AD by Anglo-Saxon settlers from what is now Northwest Germany, West Denmark and the Netherlands, displacing the Celtic languages that previously predominated. The Old English of the Anglo-Saxon era developed into Middle English, which was spoken from the Norman Conquest era to the late 15th century. A significant influence on the shaping of Middle English came from contact with the North Germanic languages spoken by the Scandinavians who conquered and colonized parts of Britain during the 8th and 9th centuries. This contact led to much lexical borrowing and grammatical simplification. Another important influence came from the conquering Normans, who spoke a Romance Long de Oil called Old Norman, which in Britain developed into Anglo Norman. Many Norman and French loanwords entered the language in this period, especially in vocabulary related to the church, the court system and the government. The system of orthography that was established during the Middle English period is largely still in use today. Later changes in pronunciation, however, combined with the adoption of various foreign spellings, mean that the spelling of modern English words appears highly irregular. Early Modern English, the language used by Shakespeare, is dated from around 1500. It incorporated many Renaissance-era loans from Latin and Ancient Greek, as well as borrowings from other European languages, including French, German and Dutch. Significant pronunciation changes in this period included the ongoing Great Vowel Shift, which affected the qualities of most long vowels. Modern English proper, similar in most respects to that spoken today, was in place by the late 17th century. The English language came to be exported to other parts of the world through British colonisation, and is now the dominant language in Britain and Ireland, the United States and Canada, Australia, New Zealand and many smaller former colonies, as well as being widely spoken in India, parts of Africa, and elsewhere. Partially due to United States influence, English gradually took on the status of a global lingua franca in the second half of the 20th century. This is especially true in Europe, where English has largely taken over the former roles of French and much earlier Latin as a common language used to conduct business and diplomacy, share scientific and technological information, and otherwise communicate across national boundaries. The efforts of English-speaking Christian missionaries has resulted in English becoming a second language for many other groups. Old English consisted of a diverse group of dialects, reflecting the varied origins of the Anglo-Saxon kingdoms established in different parts of Britain. The late West Saxon dialect eventually became dominant, however, a greater input to Middle English came from the Anglian dialects. Global variation among different English dialects and accents remains significant today. Scots, a form of English traditionally spoken in parts of Scotland and the north of Ireland, is sometimes treated as a separate language. Proto-English English has its roots in the languages of the Germanic peoples of Northern Europe. During the Roman Empire, most of the Germanic inhabited area Germania remained independent from Rome, although some southwestern parts were within the empire. Some Germanics served in the Roman military, and troops from Germanic tribes such as the Tungri, Batavi, Menapii and Frisi served in Britain Britannia under Roman command. Germanic settlement and power expanded during the Migration period, which saw the fall of the Western Roman Empire. The Germanic settlement of Britain took place from the 5th to the 7th century, following the end of Roman rule on the island. The Anglo-Saxon Chronicle relates that around the year 449 Vortigern, king of the Britons, invited the Angle kin, Angles allegedly led by the Germanic brothers Hengist and Horsa, to help repel invading Picts, in return for lands in the southeast of Britain. This led to waves of settlers who eventually established seven kingdoms, known as the Heptarchy. The Chronicle was not a contemporaneous work, however, and cannot be regarded as an accurate record of such early events. Bede, who wrote his ecclesiastical history in AD 731, writes of invasion by Angles, Saxons, and Jutes, although the precise nature of the invasion and settlement and the contributions made by these particular groups are the subject of much dispute among historians. The languages spoken by the Germanic peoples who initially settled in Britain were part of the West Germanic branch of the Germanic language family. They consisted of dialects from the Ingvianic grouping, spoken mainly around the North Sea coast, in regions that lie within modern Denmark, northwest Germany and the Netherlands. Due to specific similarities between Early English and Old Frisian, an Anglo-Frisian grouping is also identified. 
These dialects had most of the typical West Germanic features, including a significant amount of grammatical inflection. Vocabulary came largely from the core Germanic stock, although due to the Germanic people's extensive contacts with the Roman world, the settlers' languages already included a number of loanwords from Latin. For instance, the predecessor of modern English wine had been borrowed into early Germanic from the Latin venum. Topic. Old English Topic. The dialects spoken by the Germanic settlers developed into a language that would come to be called Anglo-Saxon, or now more commonly Old English. It displaced the so-called indigenous Britonic Celtic and the Latin of the former Roman rulers in most of the areas of Britain that later formed the Kingdom of England, while Celtic languages remained in most of Scotland, Wales and Cornwall, and many compound Celtic Germanic placenames survive, hinting at early language mixing. Old English continued to exhibit local variation, the remnants of which continue to be found in dialects of modern English. The four main dialects were Mercian, Northumbrian, Kentish and West Saxon, the last of these formed the basis for the literary standard of the later Old English period, although the dominant forms of Middle and Modern English would develop mainly from Mercian. Old English was first written using a runic script called the Futhork, but this was replaced by a version of the Latin alphabet introduced by Irish missionaries in the 9th century. Most literary output was in either the early West Saxon of Alfred the Great's time, or the late West Saxon regarded as the classical form of Old English of the Winchester School inspired by Bishop Ethelwold of Winchester and followed by such writers as the prolific Eilfric of Ainsham, the grammarian. The most famous surviving work from the Old English period is the epic poem Beowulf, composed by an unknown poet. The introduction of Christianity from around the year 600 encouraged the addition of over 400 Latin loan words into Old English, such as the predecessors of the modern priest, paper, and school, and a smaller number of Greek loan words. The speech of eastern and northern parts of England was also subject to strong Old Norse influence due to Scandinavian rule and settlement beginning in the 9th century see below. Most native English speakers today find Old English unintelligible, even though about half of the most commonly used words in modern English have Old English roots. The grammar of Old English was much more inflected than modern English, combined with freer word order, and was grammatically quite similar in some respects to modern German. The language had demonstrative pronouns equivalent to this and that, but did not have definite article the. The Old English period is considered to have evolved into the Middle English period some time after the Norman conquest of 1066, when the language came to be influenced significantly by the new ruling class's language, Old Norman. Topic: <laughs> Scandinavian influence. Topic: Vikings from modern-day Norway and Denmark began to raid parts of Britain from the late 8th century onward. In 865, however, a major invasion was launched by what the Anglo-Saxons called the Great Heathen Army, which eventually brought large parts of northern and eastern England the Danelaw under Scandinavian control. Most of these areas were retaken by the English under Edward the Elder in the early 10th century, although York and Northumbria were not permanently regained until the death of Eric Bloodaxe in 954. Scandinavian raids resumed in the late 10th century during the reign of Ethelred the Unready, and Swain Forkbeard eventually succeeded in briefly being declared King of England in 1013, followed by the longer reign of his son Canute from 1016 to 1035, and Canute's sons Harold Harefoot and Harthacanute until 1042. The Scandinavians, or Norsemen, spoke dialects of a North Germanic language known as Old Norse. The Anglo-Saxons and the Scandinavians thus spoke related languages from different branches west and north of the Germanic family, many of their lexical roots were the same or similar, although their grammatical systems were more divergent. Probably significant numbers of Norse speakers settled in the Danelaw during the period of Scandinavian control. Many place names in those areas are of Scandinavian provenance those ending in by, for example, it is believed that the settlers often established new communities in places that had not previously been developed by the Anglo-Saxons. The extensive contact between Old English and Old Norse speakers, including the possibility of intermarriage that resulted from the acceptance of Christianity by the Danes in 878, undoubtedly influenced the varieties of those languages spoken in the areas of contact. 
Some scholars even believe that Old English and Old Norse underwent a kind of fusion and that the resulting English language might be described as a mixed language or creole. During the rule of Canute and other Danish kings in the first half of the 11th century, a kind of diglossia may have come about, with the West Saxon literary language existing alongside the Norse-influenced Midland dialect of English, which could have served as a coin or spoken lingua franca. When Danish rule ended, and particularly after the Norman conquest, the status of the minority Norse language presumably declined relative to that of English, and its remaining speakers assimilated to English in a process involving language shift and language death. The widespread bilingualism that must have existed during the process possibly contributed to the rate of borrowings from Norse into English. Only about 100 or 150 Norse words, mainly connected with government and administration, are found in Old English writing. The borrowing of words of this type was stimulated by Scandinavian rule in the Dane law and during the later reign of Canute. However, most surviving Old English texts are based on the West Saxon standard that developed outside the Dane law. It is not clear to what extent Norse influenced the forms of the language spoken in eastern and northern England at that time. Later texts from the Middle English era, now based on an eastern Midland rather than a Wessex standard, reflect the significant impact that Norse had on the language. In all, English borrowed about 2,000 words from Old Norse, several hundred surviving in modern English. Norse borrowings include many very common words, such as anger, bag, both, hit, law, leg, same, skill, sky, take, window, and even the pronoun they. Norse influence is also believed to have reinforced the adoption of the plural copular verb form or rather than alternative Old English forms like sind. It is also considered to have stimulated and accelerated the morphological simplification found in Middle English, such as the loss of grammatical gender and explicitly marked case except in pronouns. That is possibly confirmed by observations that simplification of the case endings occurred earliest in the north and latest in the southwest. The spread of phrasal verbs in English is another grammatical development to which Norse may have contributed although here a possible Celtic influence is also noted. Middle English Middle English is the form of English spoken roughly from the time of the Norman Conquest in 1066 until the end of the 15th century. For centuries after the conquest, the Norman kings and high-ranking nobles in England and to some extent elsewhere in the British Isles spoke Anglo-Norman, a variety of Old Norman, originating from a northern Long Doyle dialect. Merchants and lower-ranked nobles were often bilingual in Anglo-Norman and English, whilst English continued to be the language of the common people. Middle English was influenced by both Anglo-Norman, and later Anglo-French see characteristics of the Anglo-Norman language. Until the 14th century, Anglo-Norman and then French were the language of the courts and government. Even after the decline of Norman, Standard French retained the status of a formal or prestige language, and about 10,000 French and Norman loanwords entered Middle English, particularly terms associated with government, church, law, the military, fashion, and food see English language word origins and list of English words of French origin. The strong influence of Old Norse on English described in the previous section also becomes apparent during this period. The impact of the native British Celtic languages that English continued to displace is generally held to be much smaller, although some attribute such analytic verb forms as the continuous aspect, to be doing, or to have been doing, to Celtic influence. Some scholars have also put forward hypotheses that Middle English was a kind of Creole language resulting from contact between Old English and either Old Norse or Anglo-Norman. English literature began to reappear after 1200, when a changing political climate and the decline in Anglo-Norman made it more respectable. The Provisions of Oxford, released in 1258, was the first English government document to be published in the English language after the Norman Conquest. In 1362, Edward III became the first king to address Parliament in English. The Pleading in English Act 1362 made English the only language in which court proceedings could be held, though the official record remained in Latin. By the end of the century, even the royal court had switched to English. Anglo-Norman remained in use in limited circles somewhat longer, but it had ceased to be a living language. Official documents began to be produced regularly in English during the 15th century. Geoffrey Chaucer, who lived in the late 14th century, is the most famous writer from the Middle English period, and the Canterbury Tales is his best-known work. 
The English language changed enormously during the Middle English period, both in vocabulary and pronunciation, and in grammar. While Old English is a heavily inflected language synthetic, the use of grammatical endings diminished in Middle English analytic. Grammar distinctions were lost as many noun and adjective endings were leveled to e. The older plural noun marker n retained in a few cases such as children and oxen largely gave way to s, and grammatical gender was discarded. Definite article E appears around 1200, later spelled as the, first appearing in East and North England as a substitute for Old English say and co. Nominative forms of that. English spelling was also influenced by Norman in this period, with the theta and sounds being spelled th rather than with the Old English letters thorn and ev, which did not exist in Norman. These letters remain in the modern Icelandic and Faroese alphabets, having been borrowed from Old English via Old West Norse. Early modern English Topic. English underwent extensive sound changes during the 15th century, while its spelling conventions remained largely constant. Modern English is often dated from the Great Vowel Shift, which took place mainly during the 15th century. The language was further transformed by the spread of a standardised London-based dialect in government and administration and by the standardising effect of printing, which also tended to regularise capitalization. As a result, the language acquired self-conscious terms such as «accent» and «dialect». As most early presses come from continental Europe, a few native English letters such as «and» «die out», for some time e is written as ye. By the time of William Shakespeare mid early 17th century, the language had become clearly recognizable as modern English. In 1604, the first English dictionary was published, the Table Alphabetical. Increased literacy and travel facilitated the adoption of many foreign words, especially borrowings from Latin and Greek from the time of the Renaissance. In the 17th century, Latin words were often used with their original inflections, but these eventually disappeared. As there are many words from different languages and English spelling is variable, the risk of mispronunciation is high, but remnants of the older forms remain in a few regional dialects, most notably in the West Country. During the period, loan words were borrowed from Italian, German, and Yiddish. British acceptance of and resistance to Americanisms began during this period. <laughs> Modern English Topic. The first authoritative and full-featured English dictionary, the Dictionary of the English Language, was published by Samuel Johnson in 1755. To a high degree, the dictionary standardized both English spelling and word usage. Meanwhile, grammar texts by Loth, Murray, Priestley, and others attempted to prescribe standard usage even further. Early Modern English and Late Modern English, also called Present Day English PDE, differ essentially in vocabulary. Late modern English has many more words, arising from the Industrial Revolution and technologies that created a need for new words, as well as international development of the language. The British Empire at its height covered one quarter of the Earth's land surface, and the English language adopted foreign words from many countries. British English and North American English, the two major varieties of the language, are together spoken by 400 million people. The total number of English speakers worldwide may exceed 1 billion. The English language will almost certainly continue to evolve over time. With the development of computer and online environments such as chat rooms, social media expressions, and apps, and the adoption of English as a worldwide lingua franca across cultures, customs, and traditions, it should not be surprising to see further shortening of words, phrases, and or sentences. Phonological changes Topic. Topic. Introduction Topic. Over the last 1,200 years or so, English has undergone extensive changes in its vowel system but many fewer changes to its consonants. In the Old English period, a number of umlaut processes affected vowels in complex ways, and unstressed vowels were gradually eroded, eventually leading to a loss of grammatical case and grammatical gender in the early Middle English period. The most important umlaut process was asterisk i mutation c. 
500 CE, which led to pervasive alternations of all sorts, many of which survive in the modern language, e.g. in noun paradigms foot versus feet, mouse versus mice, brother versus brethren, in verb paradigms sold versus sell, nominal derivatives from adjectives strong versus strength, broad versus breadth, foul versus filth and from other nouns fox versus vixen, verbal derivatives food versus to feed and comparative adjectives old versus elder consonants were more stable although velar consonants were significantly modified by palatalization which produced alternations such as speak versus speech drink versus drench wake versus watch bake versus batch the middle english period saw further vowel changes most significant was the great vowel shift c 1500 ce which transformed the pronunciation of all long vowels this occurred after the spelling system was fixed, and accounts for the drastic differences in pronunciation between short, mat, met, bit, cot versus long, mate, meat, meat, bite, coat. Other changes that left echoes in the modern language were homorganic lengthening before LD, MB, ND, which accounts for the long vowels in child, mind, climb, etc., pre cluster shortening, which resulted in the vowel alternations in child versus children, keep versus kept, meet versus met, and trisyllabic laxing, which is responsible for alternations such as grateful versus gratitude, divine versus divinity, soul versus solitary. Among the more significant recent changes to the language have been the development of rhotic and non-rhotic accents i.e. r dropping the trap bath split in many dialects of British English and flapping of t and d between vowels in American English and Australian English topic <laughs> vowel changes topic the following table shows the principal developments in the stressed vowels, from Old English through Modern English C indicates any consonant. The following chart shows the primary developments of English vowels in the last 600 years, in more detail, since late Middle English of Chaucer's time. The great vowel shift can be seen in the dramatic developments from c. 1400 to 1600. Neither of the above tables covers the history of Middle English diphthongs, the changes before, are, or various special cases and exceptions. For details, see Phonological History of English as well as the articles on Old English Phonology and Middle English Phonology. Examples <laughs> 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 The vowel changes over time can be seen in the following example words, showing the changes in their form over the last 2,000 years. Topic. Grammatical changes Topic. The English language once had an extensive declension system similar to Latin, Modern German and Icelandic. Old English distinguished among the nominative, accusative, dative, and genitive cases, and for strongly declined adjectives and some pronouns also a separate instrumental case which otherwise and later completely coincided with the dative. In addition, the dual number was distinguished from the singular and plural. Declension was greatly simplified during the Middle English period, when the accusative and dative cases of the pronouns merged into a single oblique case that also replaced the genitive case after prepositions. Nouns in modern English no longer decline for case, except for the genitive. Topic. Evolution of English pronouns Topic. Pronouns such as whom and him contrasted with who and he are a conflation of the old accusative and dative cases, as well as of the genitive case after prepositions while her also includes the genitive case. This conflated form is called the oblique case or the object objective case, because it is used for objects of verbs direct, indirect, or oblique as well as for objects of prepositions. See object pronoun. The information formerly conveyed by distinct case forms is now mostly provided by prepositions and word order. In Old English as well as Modern German and Icelandic as further examples, these cases had distinct forms. Although some grammarians continue to use the traditional terms accusative and dative. These are functions rather than morphological cases in modern English. That is, the form who may play accusative or dative roles as well as instrumental or prepositional roles, but it is a single morphological form, contrasting with nominative who and genitive whose. Many grammarians use the labels subjective 
objective and possessive for nominative, oblique, and genitive pronouns. Modern English nouns exhibit only one inflection of the reference form, the possessive case, which some linguists argue is not a case at all, but a clitic see the entry for genitive case for more information. Topic. Interrogative pronouns Topic. One in some dialects who is used where formal English only allows whom, though variation among dialects must be taken into account. Two usually replaced by of what postposition. Topic: First person personal pronouns. Topic: Old English also had a separate dual wit, we too, etc. However, no later forms derive from it. Topic: Second person personal pronouns. Topic. Note that the ye, you distinction still existed, at least optionally, in early modern English. Ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. From the King James Bible. Here the letter, interchangeable with, in manuscripts, corresponds to th. For, see yog. Old English also had a separate dual, it, ye too, etc. However, no later forms derive from it. Topic. Third person personal pronouns Topic. The origin of the modern forms is generally thought to have been a borrowing from Old Norse forms Ayr, Aeum, Era. The two different roots coexisted for some time, although currently the only common remnant is the shortened form am. Cf. Also the demonstrative pronouns. Topic. Examples Topic. Topic. Beowulf. Topic. Beowulf is an old English epic poem in alliterative verse. It is dated from the 8th to the early 11th centuries. These are the first 11 lines, which, as translated by Francis Barton Gummier, reads: Topic. Voyages of Othere and Wolfstan. Topic. This is the beginning of the voyages of Othere and Wolfstan, a prose text in Old English dated to the late 9th century. The full text can be found at Wikisource. Othere said his halaford, Elfraid Sininge, at he ealra norman enormous bute. He quai at he bute on am land norwardum we a west say. He said he at at land si sui lang nor onan, a c hit is eel west, butan on fiwum stowum stikesimilum wisha finas, on hunto on wintra, o n d on sumera on fiska be er se. He said at he at sumum seer wald fandian hu lange at land norit liege, o weyer anig mon be noran am westen bute. Offer he norit be am land, let him eeln weg at west land on at storeboard, o n d a widse on at beckboard re dagas. Aways he swa fior nor swa a huelhantan forist fara. Offer he a giet norit swa fior swa he meet on am orum rim dagam gesaglau. A big at land, er e street, o se o se in on at land, he nysse weyer, butan he wees at he er bad west anwines o nd one noran, o nd seigled a east b land swa swa he meet on fior dagam gesaglan. A skiold he er be don right nor anwines, for am at land big er serit, o se o se in on at land, he nysse weyer. A seigled he onan serit be land swa swa he meet on fief dagam jesiglan. A lag er and misel ea up on at land. A certain he up in on a ea for am he ne dorsten for by er ea siglan for unfree, for am at land ways eall geben on ore heelf er eas. Ne met he er nan geben land, seen he from his agnum ham for, a see him ways eeln weg west land on at storeboard, butan fiskarum ond fugalarum ond huntum, ond at weren eall finnas, ond him ways a widse on at beckboard. A bormas heeften cwel gebud hira land, a see he ne dorsten er on cumin. A see ara turfina land ways eel west, butan er huntin gewakoden, o faceras, o fugalaras. A translation Othere said to his lord, King Alfred, that he of all Norsemen lived northmost. 
He quoth that he lived in the land northward along the North Sea. He said though that the land was very long from there, but it is all wasteland, except that in a few places here and their fins i.e. Sami in camp, hunting in winter and in summer fishing by the sea. He said that at some time he wanted to find out how long the land lay northward or whether any man lived north of the wasteland. Then he travelled north by the land. All the way he kept the waste land on his starboard and the wide sea on his port three days. Then he was as far north as whale hunters furthest travel. Then he travelled still north as far as he might sail in another three days. Then the land bowed east or the sea into the land. He did not know which. But he knew that he waited there for west winds and somewhat north, and sailed east by the land so as he might sail in four days. Then he had to wait for due north winds, because the land bowed south or the sea into the land. He did not know which. Then he sailed from there south by the land so as he might sail in five days. Then a large river lay there up into the land. Then they turned up into the river, because they dared not sail forth past the river for hostility, because the land was all settled on the other side of the river. He had not encountered earlier any settled land since he travelled from his own home, but all the way waste land was on his starboard except fishers, fowlers and hunters, who were all Finns. And the wide sea was always on his port. The Bjarmians have cultivated their land very well, but they did not dare go in there. But the Turfin's land was all waste except where hunters encamped, or fishers or fowlers. <laughs> Ironbite of Inwit Topic. From Ironbite of Inwit, The Prick of Conscience, a translation of a French confessional prose work into the Kentish dialect of Middle English, completed in 1340. Topic. Canterbury Tales Topic. The Beginning of the Canterbury Tales, a collection of stories in poetry and prose written in the London dialect of Middle English by Geoffrey Chaucer at the end of the 14th century. Topic. Paradise Lost Topic. The Beginning of Paradise Lost, an epic poem in unrhymed iambic pentameter written in early modern English by John Milton and first published in 1667. Topic. Oliver Twist Topic. A selection from the novel Oliver Twist, written by Charles Dickens in Modern English and published in 1838. The evening arrived, the boys took their places, the master in his cook's uniform stationed himself at the copper, his pauper assistants ranged themselves behind him, the gruel was served out, and a long grace was said over the short commons. The gruel disappeared, the boys whispered each other and winked at Oliver, while his next neighbors nudged him. Child as he was, he was desperate with hunger and reckless with misery. He rose from the table, and advancing, basin and spoon in hand, to the master, said, somewhat alarmed at his own temerity. Please, sir, I want some more. The master was a fat, healthy man, but he turned very pale. He gazed in stupefied astonishment on the small rebel for some seconds, and then clung for support to the copper. The assistants were paralyzed with wonder, and the boys with fear. What? said the master at length, in a faint voice. Please, sir, replied Oliver. I want some more. The master aimed a blow at Oliver's head with the ladle, pinioned him in his arms, and shrieked aloud for the beetle. Topic. See also. Topic. Phonological history of the English language American and British English differences English phonology English studies Inkhorn debate Languages in the United Kingdom Middle English Creole hypothesis Middle English declension History of the Scots language Changes to Old English vocabulary lists List of dialects of the English language List of Germanic and Latinate equivalents Lists of English words of international origin Topic. Notes Topic. Topic. References Topic. Topic. Further reading 
Topic. David Crystal, 2013. The Story of English in 100 Words. Picador. ISBN 978-1250024206. David Crystal, 2015. Wordsmiths and Warriors, The English Language Tourist's Guide to Britain. Oxford University Press. ISBN 978-0198729136. External links The History of English Podcast Pen Corpora of Historical English Scandinavian loans in Old and Middle English, and their legacy in the dialects of England and modern Standard English.